let's look at the stomach meridian. The stomach meridian is um, in some ways paired up with the large intestine meridian. You may recall the large intestine meridian and the stomach meridian are both yang ming meridians. So they're oftentimes treated together to treat pain on the anterior surface of the body or pain anywhere along the pathways of the meridian. You recall that the large intestine meridian crosses the face and goes through the jaw. The stomach meridian also is prominent on the head and the face and through the jaw. So we'll take a look at the pathway of the stomach meridian first, because remember, the pathways are important when treating pain along the meridian. So the stomach meridian begins um, under the eye, and it travels down the side of the face to the, ed to the corner of the mouth, and then it travels back along the jaw and up the side of the head to here. So it makes kind of a U across the the face and the head, kind of covering this whole area. And then it travels down the neck and the stomach meridian comes down to the medial end of the clavicle, then it moves out to the mid-clavicular line. And it travels down the mid-clavicular line to just under the breast into the, I believe, the fifth intercostal space. And then it moves medially so that it's too soon lateral to the Ren meridian. So remembering that the mid-clavicular line is four is considered to be four sun or four divisions lateral to the midline. Half that distance is two sun or two divisions lateral to the midline. So then the stomach meridian picks up at two divisions lateral to the midline and it travels all the way down to level of the top of the pubic bone where it again moves out um, to uh, level with the uh, ASIS um, and the top of the pubic bone stomach 31, and it travels down the lateral aspect of the leg or anterior lateral aspect of the leg to the knee, through the uh, lateral eye of the knee, along the yang or uh, lateral aspect um, of the uh, crest of the tibia, down the foot, ending on the uh, second toe, on the um, lateral aspect of the corner of the nail of the second toe. Stomach one is located just between when the when the pupil is when the person is looking straight ahead, directly below the pupil between the eyeball and the infraorbital ridge is stomach one. It's an uncommonly used point, um, although um, is effective for treating eye problems. We'll look at other points as well for that same problem. Uh, stomach two is um, just under the um, infraorbital ridge. Um, uh, I think in at the infraorbital foramen. Um, stomach three is found on the again on this straight line on the line um, level with with the eyeball when it's or the pupil when it's pointing straight ahead level with the bottom of the alanazi is stomach three. Um, we can also locate stomach three by palpating just under the zygomatic arch. Oftentimes stomach three is a good point for sinus pain and oftentimes we can palpate in here. Sometimes we might find the point a little bit lateral or a little bit medial. Generally it's right in the center there um, and it's again a very good point for treating uh, sinus pain. Let me just show you the insertion techniques for stomach three. Generally needle this on a slight angle upward toward the bone, towards the zygomatic arch. And we can get some stimulation there. Stomach four is the next point. Stomach four, if you if I can ask you, Monique, would you smile for us, please? Thank you. So right in the corner of that. Okay, thanks. In, in the corner of the smile line, level with the corner of the lips is stomach four, and stomach four is a good point for problems with the mouth. Now stomach five, six, and seven are points that are very commonly used for pain in the jaw, for bruxism, for TMJ, uh, any kind of, or uh, lower jaw tooth pain, any kind of pain throughout this area, any kind of dysfunction to this area, these are extremely important points. So. First one we're going to locate is stomach five. Stomach five is located in the um, anterior to the um, 
masseter muscle. So if I ask you to clench your jaw for me for a second, we can see the masseter pops up and we can certainly feel that more than we can see it. So you can just relax your jaw now. So the, when the masseter muscle pops up, just anterior to the masseter mouth, to the belly of the masseter, is stomach five. Stomach six is right in the center of the belly of the masseter. So again, we would ask her to clench her jaw and at the most lateral point, when the jaw is clenched, okay, and you can relax now. The most lateral point when the jaw is clenched is stomach six, a very powerful point and very uh, commonly used for jaw pain and bruxism. Stomach seven is about one sun above. If we go directly up from stomach six, we fall into a point right here, stomach seven. It's under the uh, edge of the zygomatic arch um, and just above the belly of the masseter. And stomach seven, again, is an important point for jaw pain. Stomach seven is a point which appears and disappears based on how tightly or loosely the jaw is held. So if the patient just slacks their jaw. Now you can't see this, but with her jaw slack, there's a space here and I can feel it with my finger. If she opens her jaw wide, could you open your jaw wide for me? That space disappears. And if she clenches her jaw, again, it disappears. So if she, you just ask her to relax, slack her jaw, and then we can get that needle into that point easily. Let me show you in the needling technique for stomach seven and stomach six, they're both the same needling technique numbers, stomach five, stomach six, and stomach seven. Perpendicular insertion, just like that. Okay. Stomach eight is the next point that we will we'll take a look at. Stomach eight is in the hairline. So if we follow up stomach seven up into the hairline, just into the hairline um, up about an inch above where the hair begins or an inch and a half. Um, and we can find kind of what we call the corner of the hairline. You can follow the sutures or you can follow um, uh, the, the actual hairline on some people. Monique's hairline comes a little bit forward of what we would call her hairline in Chinese medicine. So if we followed her hairline this way and this way, we would come to the corner here and we'll find stomach eight is just back in here. Uh, not a very commonly used point, but it does have some nice indications for headaches. My teacher, Dr. So, liked to use it for those things. So let's move on down. Um, from the head, we come down into the neck. Stomach nine is uh, level with the um, Adam's apple and um, just uh, on the um, uh, anterior border of the SCM, and it's really right over top of the carotid artery. So stomach nine um, is a point that we treat with uh, significant respect. I'm going to, I'm not going to needle stomach nine, stomach 10, 11. There's a number of points here on the stomach meridian that we're just going to kind of go by because they're not all that commonly used. So let's take a look at the next set of points down here on the chest. So when we proceed from the neck, stomach nine, 10, and 11, stomach 11 is found just above the medial border of the clavicle. Stomach 12 is found in the supraclavicular fossa at the middle of the clavicle. And this is our, again, our four sun uh, measurement, the, the midclavicular line. Um, it's also the line of the nipple line. And so the stomach meridian is gonna run down to the um, fifth intercostal space. So it's gonna run right through the nipple, which is stomach 17, a point that is forbidden to needle and forbidden for treatment. Um, but we have, um, so uh, stomach 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18 is in the fifth intercostal space um, on the uh, midclavicular line. And 19 is where the stomach meridian comes in to two sun off of the midline. So we, we're, we're moving from four sun to two sun. And again, you'll recall that we can just slide our finger over the muscle bundle to get a sense of where that is, right? The small muscle bundle right here. So this is um, stomach uh, 19, stomach 20, 21, 22. 25 is a good point to remember. Stomach 25 is, um, again, a good landmark because it's right at Ren 8. And stomach 25, two sun off the midline at Ren 8. And again, remember that we don't want to needle too deeply in the abdomen on any points in the abdomen, just like we don't want to needle deeply or at a um, uh, perpendicular angle on the chest to avoid the lungs. So there's stomach 25. Now, the next, there's a few other stomach points that I want to um, 
point out on the abdomen here before we move to the leg. And these are stomach 28 and stomach 30. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Stomach 30 is located, again, just um, above the level of the pubic bone. So just on the superior border of the pubic symphysis is stomach 30. And stomach 28 is level with REN4. So REN4, as you recall, this is REN8, REN6 over the first muscle bundle, REN4 over the second muscle bundle, Tucson lateral on either side is stomach 28. Stomach 28 is a particularly useful point when treating disharmonies associated with the lower warmer, in particular disorders associated with, um, the, uh, with the menstrual cycle or with female reproduction, pain associated with the menstrual cycle, uh, infertility. There are many, many indications for stomach 28 and stomach 30. Stomach 30 is also a very important point, arguably more important than stomach 28 because it's also um, the major coalescent point of the Chiang Mai which um, we talk about in other areas of this program. So stomach 30, again, I'm going to ask you, Monique, can you please point to your a pubic symphysis for me, the top of your pubic bone? So the pubic bone is here. Stomach 30, we're going to find two soon off is going to be right here. Moving from the, um, from the abdomen to the leg, we're going to stay right at that level at the top of the pubic bone, and we're going to move lateral till we get to the ASIS, and that line between the top of the pubic bone and the ASIS brings us to stomach 31. So now let's take a look at the points on the leg. Good. So stomach 31 is level with the top of the pubic bone and the ASIS, so there's stomach 31. Now, if we look, we want to imagine the, the pathway of the stomach meridian. We'll look at the next uh, important point where, at, at the knee, which is stomach 35. Stomach 35 is on the lateral uh, aspect of the patella ligament. If we get a little bit of a bend in Monique's knee, we can see that this is the patella, tic, the patella uh, ligament here, patella tendon. Um, and on the uh, lateral side, is stomach 35. On the medial side is an extra point called um, either Shi Yan or Shi Yik. One of these is Shi Yan, the other is Shi Yik. Um, but these points are used for uh, knee problems quite commonly. So stomach 31 is here, stomach 34 is here, the stomach meridian runs along, I'm sorry, stomach 35 is here, the stomach meridian runs along this pathway. Stomach 34 is too soon above the corner of the patella. So again, two finger breaths for me, two thumb breaths for Monique. Um, stomach 34 is a good local point for knee pain. Stomach 35, also a good point for knee pain. Now from stomach 35, we're gonna go down to, to stomach 41, and stomach 41 um, is um, uh, down here in the ankle. So the stomach meridian, like the large intestine meridian, was running across the yang side of the radial bone. The large intestine meridian runs on the yang side of the crest of the tibia. Um, the stomach meridian, um, stomach 41 is down here, stomach 34 is here, so all the other points lie in between. Stomach 36 is the next most important point for us. Stomach 36 is three sun distal to stomach 35, so three sun distal to stomach 35, and one sun lateral to the crest of the tibia, which places it about here. Now, stomach 36 is very easy to find. It's a very important point, certainly a three-star point or a five-star point, depending on the system you're using. If we just put our finger on the lateral aspect of the crest of the tibia, applying a little bit of pressure and moving up the leg, it gets naturally pushed off and stops right here in stomach 36. So if, again, if we double check that measurement, this gives us stomach 36. Stomach 36, a very important point. It's called Susan Lee or leg three miles. And the story that goes behind it is that if you're on a long march and you can't get any more miles out of your legs, if we burn a little moxa or do a little treatment on stomach 36, we'll get another three miles out of those legs. Story may be apocryphal, but it does keep in mind, or helps to keep in our minds, the functions of stomach 36, one of the most tonifying and strengthening points on the body. Also, uh, a very strong moving point for treating pain along the stomach meridian. So stomach 36, 
Um, stomach 37, stomach 38, 39, and 40. Let's take a look at stomach 38 and 30 uh, and 40. Stomach 38 is located uh, 8 sun uh, above the um, lateral malleolus and 8 sun below the knee. There's 16 sun in between my two fingers here. So halfway will bring us to the level of stomach 38. And stomach 38 and stomach 40 are both the same level. Stomach 38 is one sun lateral to the crest of the tibia, and stomach 40 is two sun lateral to the crest of the tibia. Stomach 39 is one sun distal to stomach 38. So the stomach meridian makes a little jog here. It goes stomach 38, stomach 39, stomach 40, and then it comes down to stomach 41. From stomach 41, the stomach meridian proceeds across the top of the foot to stomach 44, which is located here. We say at the margin of the web between the toes. Stomach 44 is an easy point, again, to needle, keeping in mind that we generally needle perpendicular to the skin. We keep that on a bit of an angle because the skin is on an angle there. Stomach 44 and stomach 45 is located again at the corner of the nail and here on the lateral corner of the nail on the second toe. And that does it for the stomach meridian.